The Nike LeBron just got a refresh or an update. Since they're already low tops, they can't turn them into lows. So instead, we got these. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on these bad boys right here. This is the Nike LeBron 21. Yes, we've already reviewed the shoe, but they received an update or a mid-season refresh. Typically what you'll see with brands is the high tops come out first and then they drop a low top right around this time. And that's what they consider their refresh of the line. It extends the life of the model while they're gearing up for the launch of the new one. And like I said before, when the LeBrons debut as a low, there's no way to really refresh refresh it they used to do elites and stuff remember that so they used to have like three change-ups which wasn't the best idea even though it was cool to get different or upgraded product but again because they are already low tops there's not much they could do with them so here we go now first things first before we deep dive into the shoes I did want to give a big thank you to everybody for watching liking commenting and just overall supporting the channel you guys have really been kicking the algorithms ass for us and for that we're forever grateful so if you haven't subscribed already please do so the buttons right down below the video if you would like to give us a thumbs up that would be awesome and also if you could leave a comment and by the way stay tuned for the question of the day that would be fantastic now as far as this shoe is concerned they're not stating specifically that this is an update of the shoe they're not stating that it's a different version of the model on the box label it literally just says lebron 21 so even though they're not mentioning it it is a refresh they're removing some things is that a good thing or a bad thing we'll talk about that now but just in case you're wondering they don't come in a different box or anything they still have that clamshell box and they still come with the clamshell little uh info card or whatever this thing is cool like this should come with every shoe and it details everything that they've got on the shoe except for that first thing they didn't actually remove that. that that was kind of like a weird like obviously they just printed a bunch of these they're like throw them in every model but uh that first thing that they depict on the shoe is exactly what they removed on these so what we end up with is a lighter weight version of the original 21 so for those of you guys that don't like weight or too much weight on your shoes and maybe you don't like leathers and raw materials even though not every colorway was made with them the outer shell of the shoe did create a slightly heavier and more restrictive ride. I will say that it was a little bit more supportive, but I don't think that the change up here, at least not on this colorway, is going to affect support whatsoever. So the outsole hasn't changed. The traction was fantastic then, and it's still fantastic now. It's a very interesting multi-directional pattern. It's not herringbone or radial or anything like that. It is a storytelling type of pattern. What story are they telling? Honestly, who cares like if the traction works and it works man i will say be careful if you primarily play outdoors but you know that's kind of the given with every shoe nowadays they're primarily made for indoor basketball and not outdoor basketball now the cushion setup hasn't changed whatsoever we still have a cushlon midsole which i think is a great move especially in conjunction with the two zoom air units that are inside this shoe and yes there's two of them there's a four foot zoom turbo unit the thickness or the stack height is about six millimeters this is just for the unit itself not for the overall midsole and then in the rear we've got a 13 millimeter zoom bag and that's pretty big i remember way back in the day when i was reviewing the jordan mellow m10 and they came with a 10 millimeter zoom bag and we were amazed by it but that was like the big thing it's like oh man this is the most zoom they've ever stacked in the shoe before and this has even more of it so there you go this is the insole it's a uh, very similar to ortholite it looks like it's just a recycled material like all of the extra scraps and things like that were just kind of blended up and made into one it's fairly dense it's not as open celled as like that light blue stuff it feels a little bit more similar to the darker blue style of ortholite which is a little bit better it's still not a fantastic insole but it's better than the cheapest ones and obviously it's removable so if you don't like like that and you wanted to put in anything else or you happen to wear orthotics you can do so just make sure that you do that before you start playing them because they are covered in glue now the upper is where things change like i was saying before they've completely removed the overall upper or the outer shell despite what it says on the info card that it comes with do i think that that's a good move i think for certain original lebron 21 colorways yes and mostly the ones that feature the synthetic materials like that weird fake patent leather stuff the abalones and just i don't even know who would want to play in that crap but whatever it's a cheap material it cuts manufacturing costs down by a lot or not the manufacturing costs specifically it cuts down the material costs manufacturing costs remain the same but when you're saving in one area where the other is a little bit more expensive then obviously your overall is a little bit lower so by removing that layer it's going to make the upper a little bit more flexible where I think that it's a downgrade is with select original colorways where they featured the premium feeling overlays which would be either new bucks or leathers some of them had suede so in that sense I'd say maybe 
maybe it's a downgrade, but either way, there was always this base layer underneath the outer layer. So again, is it going to affect performance greatly? No. It's not, it's gonna be primarily the same shoe, just a little bit lighter. What they actually have here is a mesh build, which is really interesting, but it's covered in plastic. Awesome, wow. One of the more interesting things about the removal of the outer layer is that the base layer originally had this, I don't know if they still call it this, but they used to call this mag wire. So the really thick fly wire looking stuff that's all over all those squiggly lines. Those are all little like suspension pieces. So if you think about a bridge, not the one that just fell and that sucks, you know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to make light of anything. Typically if there's a lot of weight on top of the bridge and then there's a lot of wind, like if we take the Bay Area for example and either the Bay Bridge or the Golden Gate Bridge, you're dealing with both of those scenarios and each of those cables that are along the bridge are suspension cables. So it's allowing it to be held up and propped up for support, but then it's also allowing it to sway and move so that it can move naturally without any tension and thus causing everything to break and collapse. That's the same exact concept here with all of these mag wire or fly wire cables. That's the overall concept with fly wire in general. The difference here is that they're heat welded into this base layer, whereas they were a little bit more free, I guess you could say in the original because there was two layers. There was that outer shell, keeping everything secure to the base layer. Whereas with this one, there's not. So that's really the only big change. Is it something that's going to drastically increase performance and all that stuff? Again, not really. It does make things a little bit lighter. And this base layer right here is plenty sturdy because it is covered in plastic. So it's not losing any support whatsoever. So again, you're just getting a slightly tweaked package. So if you like the last one, but maybe you thought eh, the upper is a little bit more, like thick and restrictive and feels cumbersome, then this one might be a better option for you. There are a couple of premium features. I will say maybe this is just this colorway but uh you know i don't have the time to go out and check every single one but on the tongue and on the little heel flap they do add some suede there so i do think that that's a nice touch you can also see on the back that that maguire area is kind of independent it's not sandwiched in between or heat welded in between the plastic so that's what it originally looked like before they removed the outer shell the internal collar lining is still nike's sphere material so that uh originally i had assumed that it was for molding to your foot but marketing said that it was actually for moisture wicking and dry fit properties. When I spoke with the original designers way back in the 90s, Aaron Cooper was one of them. He said that my initial assumption was actually correct is that the material does mold to your foot. It does happen to allow for a little bit of airflow, but that's what all those craters are for, that it wraps around your heel and around your Achilles, which eventually will give you a one-to-one -one fit. You also have that Nike torch style tongue. It's not exactly like Nike's torch material. That stuff I feel like is very underutilized because we never see it anymore, but we used to in the Kobe's and we we still do in some of the pro trucks. Now, overall fit, I would say go true to size. You should be good to go. Whatever you wore in previous LeBron 21s, and maybe you were interested in this one, I'd say go for it. Same exact size. You should be good. Just know that you're going to have to break in this outer shell. Oh, one last thing. Look at this swoosh. It's gorgeous. Like I know that it's just chrome, but it's an actual piece. It's not like a cutout or anything like that. So because they removed that outer shell that did have the cutout that showed the Maguire underneath, they needed to put that logo somehow somewhere. And that's how they did it. It looks cool. If you were interested in grabbing a pair of these, I have seen them online already at select retailers. If you're in our area, the Sacramento area, Phenom's going to carry them. You can probably find them on their website, which is going to be linked down below in the description box. Or if you happen to be, you know, like I said, in our area, go down to their store, check it out. It's a dope ass shop. Now, with all that being said, do we happen to have a question of the day? We do. We just posted the Michael Chang shoes. Yes. So we talked a lot about Serena Williams in there. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take it to the NBA. Is this a user submitted question? It is. Okay, real quick. Not only do you want to leave comments and stuff, but if you happen to have a question of the day that you'd like to submit, we will pull from the audience and everything like that. So while we don't guarantee that the question will be chosen, if you think that you have a great one, keep leaving it in every video. Don't be shy about it. Just leave it there. Eventually we will see it. So with that being said, go ahead. So in a world where you played in the NBA, would you rather be a star player who never won mm. or a role player who won multiple? Think Gilbert Arenas versus, and I'm going to butcher this, Kentavious Caldwell Pope. I don't even know who that is. Mm. I know who Arenas is, obviously, but uh, I'll say, would you rather be Allen Iverson or would you rather be Luke Longley? And for me, I'd rather be AI. You get way more lucrative deals that way. I know that you win a ring and everything, but that NBA money ain't forever. Allen Iverson got a lifetime contract with Reebok. He's paying the bills still. So um, yeah, I, I, I would think that the potential earning for you, because again, this is kind of a business. I would rather be that guy 
even if you don't win anything, just because you're marketable. So you'd be in subway commercials, advertisements, and maybe get a shoe deal, or, or maybe even get a shoe, who knows? Whereas when you're the other guy, like yeah, you're in the NBA, but for how long and for how much? Like you gotta be like really savvy with your money. So I'd rather be the guy that's just bringing in the cash. But with all that being said, sound off below and let us know what you think about the LeBron 21 refresh. Do you think this is a good idea, or do you think that they should have just been like, nah, bro, just wait for the 22s, be patient. Although, after seeing the 22s leak, maybe this was a good idea. Anyways, either way, sound off below and let us know. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Feel free to chime in on the question of the day and leave a potential question of the day in the comments as well. It could be about anything, by the way. I think last time we talked about duct taping things to trees. That was weird. But with all that being said, we'll catch you guys on the next one. So until then, have a good one.